members and anyone in the public gallery can use mobile devices as long as they're in airplane mode and devices are muted. Um, and that uh, you can connect to assembly Wi-Fi and password details are in the gallery rules. It's not permitted to take photographs or record any of the meeting and the meeting will be on camera with live video, video broadcasting and a recorded video of the meeting placed on the committee's website. So moving to item one on the agenda, apologies. Um, we have apologies for long-standing apologies from Stuart Dixon and we also have apologies today from John Stewart. Um, Moving then to item two, the draft minutes of last week's meeting are at page five of your pack. Um, are members content that these are an accurate reflection of the meeting? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, item three then, chairperson's business. There is nothing, nope, nothing for that. Nothing for us to flag. So we're moving then to item number six, matters arising. Um, 6.1 at page 41 of your pack um, is in relation to the department's programme for government priority that the economic strategy will support um, inclusive and inclusive growth and create jobs as part of a Green New Deal. Um, I would like to come back to this at a later yeah, date. Chair, I, I think it's, it's, it's fairly short. It's short and um, my concern about it is, is kind of looking at how a Green New Deal fits into those things as opposed to how they are at a, at a higher level and obviously feeding into a Green New Deal. Chair, I think to what the committee had talked about previously was ensuring that that is part of the DNA of the yeah. strategy as it's yeah. created or recreated from the previous draft. Um, so we will continue to put pressure there um, for the department to, as I say, make that part of the DNA. Right, um, 6.2 then is at page 44 of um, your packs. At our meeting on the 12th of February, the committee asked the department um, what input if any, that the department had into the um, the consultation from the Department of International Trade. Um, so that is there on page 44. Yeah. Chair, if I can just say on that one, it, it's also very much a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's quite a tight time frame. It is. Um, and just looking at what the minister has said in, in relation to it. We've pushed it out to all of our stakeholders fairly aggressively. Um, and we're waiting to see what comes back from them. You would anticipate the department would be, and because of the time time scales, they can't go through a, a formal sort of um, set down normal consultation mm -hmm. process, but that they would be going very quickly to um, their own Kind of key list stakeholders um, to get their input on this. So what we might now also do um, is push out to our stakeholders around, have you responded to the department? Have you given the department your views on this? Can you share them with us? Because I think it would be really useful for the committee to just know what people are saying on that more generally. Yeah, and the, the minister is um, leading on the response yeah. for the, the executive. So it might be We'll There's also um, to, to that. Sure, there'll also be a fairly heavy DERA yeah, input, input mm -hmm. because of the, the, the whole agri food industry and the, the amount of back and forth mm -hmm. there is over the border as well. Okay. Okay, then moving then to, to six point three, which is in page um, three of your tabled um papers. So um, at the meeting on the 29th of January, the Economic Strategy Group, with the Economic Strategy Group members had asked for the department to outline its views on the possibility of reducing rates of VAT to the hospitality sector. Mm. So members want to have a, a look at that? Chair, it's, it's also very similar to, I think, what officials have said and what they've said previously around the lack of, of devolved control over VAT and the representations that have been made by um, by the department to uh, Whitehall around potentially looking at the idea of zero rated VAT for tourism, which is done in other countries. It's it's actually one of those things that's done reasonably broadly that across is actually on page the nine EU. Of oh, is it the table tag? Oh, it is, yes. 6.3. Because it looks like, looks like a 6 now. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's not uncommon, but as as, it, as we stand, um, UK government has not indicated uh, a willingness to, to move on that VAT. Chair, 
through that. Um, Chair, I know in, in the in the south, they've advanced in this ladder. They've reduced VAT in terms of tourism, and, and mm. it's argued as an advantage. But I do remember seeing or uh, listening to a presentation from the I think it was the head of Ecto at the time around the impact of that reduced VAT in terms of investment and jobs. And there was no invest, there was no uh, indication that that reduction in VAT seen a corresponding increase in the number of staff employed in the tourism trade. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, as it indicates there's more research required in this and maybe something the committee wants to look at in the future. Because we were almost reaching a point, and this follows on from what was supposed to be a budget debate yesterday, uh, if you get up and ask that nobody pays tax, or we reduce everybody's tax, something has to give. Um, so it's how and how we tax, obviously, but also in terms of how we support businesses in moving forward. I think what we need to be looking at is how we allow tourism to invest in its services and, and, and its marketing, rather than simply heading down this road of let's reduce tax. Sorry, just um, through the chair. Is there any possibility that we can uh, look at a hotel tax um, as a part of, of, of raising money for the sector um, that would be more? Of the top money, chair, I think, yeah, there, there's, there's been some discussion of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I think I recall research. We we take a look and see if we can. There is research. I think, research I think you know. Sure. Uh, again, yeah, um, John, I'm always yeah. agreeing with you. <laughs> but, but again, it's not about. Sure about the most of <laughs> but it's not just about you know. The, uh, other levers. You know, yeah. we have to look at other levers of, of how we actually raise investment for the the sector itself. And as the chair said, that's been mooted this week um, locally. Um, but I know it's something I've seen um, research done for various places um, across these islands in terms of creating mm -hmm. particular zones where this happens or where there's yeah. clearly very high demand that there is scope to put a, a, a hotel tax in place mm -hmm. um, that may also then have the effect of raising revenue for, for whatever purpose yeah. Yeah. and potentially making the areas outside that area especially if it's got high demand, look more attractive in terms of a lower differential price. So it, it, it can be one of those levers that maybe has a lot of positive follow-on effect, but we look into research um, on that. I'm not entirely sure of my information on this, but maybe speak to Hospitality Ulster, particularly around that. Yeah. I do understand there's something, and I'm, I'm meeting with them in the next couple of weeks, about how they pay their rate. Mm -hmm. So it almost seems that they have an additional burden because they're a hotel. Yeah, yeah, so you absolutely. could be adding a, almost a double tax onto hotels, which I think we have to be conscious of. So it's not necessarily raising it through them by an additional tax. Maybe we could look at how the rate is distributed because they do pay something. I, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Maybe we may need to ask them around that. I, I, like, I, I take your point, but I, um, I would be worried that if they already yeah. receive something over and above what anyone else yeah. does. This is individual John, uh, people who are staying or going hotel. Or, oh, yeah, like so, a, um, a resort yeah. tax. Sometimes, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. sometimes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. um, then that will help support the sector yeah. as opposed to... Yeah, I'm happy to make And it can be done in a style. Um, we have lots of examples of existing mm -hmm. levies, for yeah. want of a better word, that are then ring-fenced and reinvested into training. Um, and you could do all sorts of things around that. It's, 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 a, it's an interesting proposal and, and also allows you to do something locally. Mm -hmm rather than and have to look at levers um, being exercised from London. Yep. We, we, I'll approach hospitalities because they may already have worked on that. Um, that may well already be helpful. We don't want to reinvent the wheel if they've already got something on that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so then move into um, 6.4. There's a response from the department on page 11 of your table papers. If you remember at our 22nd of January um, meeting, we had asked the department um, for a list of who they engage with around Brexit. So the list is there. Um, and it's something we might want to come back to with them again. Um, 6.5 then is um, on page 13 of your table papers. Um, it's a draft of a letter that we agreed to send last week um, in relation to the, the, immigration, the points based immigration system to the British Home Secretary and also to Home Affairs the, Committee the, and the MAC. And the Ma Migration Advisory Council. So 
Um, members are would have a wee look at the letter or probably already have. I actually wanted to propose a, a, a further sentence um, at the end of the, the first paragraph. I think you maybe have it. We've incorporated it into the hard copy. Essentially, Chair, and, and it's a it's an issue that was put uh, yeah. to the committee last week, and, and unfortunately I didn't reflect it in the letter, but it was raised, around the issue of while um, the committee has strong concerns about the level the salary threshold has been set at, we are in no way advocating uh, a low-wage economy. I think it is, it's, it's very, very uh, necessary to make that distinction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we, we can insert a line if members are content at the end of that first paragraph. Hmm? The line isn't in yet. Is it? No, no, it wasn't in that. It's not in the version you've got. So it is not in a hard copy version. If you can read the hard copy yeah. version. So so basically it would be at the end of that first big paragraph, or it's the second full paragraph. Um, Oops. After EU membership? So yep. the paragraph yes, that begins, after yeah. First, after EU membership. To, it would state, to be clear, the committee believes that we need to raise both productivity and salary levels here. However, the current proposals will disadvantage our economy and businesses. Yeah. To just make that clear, yeah. Yeah. if members are content, yeah. we will have yeah. the... Sorry. Oh, can I go back? I, I think I'm getting quick enough. Um, uh, sure. In relation to the response uh, from the Department for the Economy about engagement, the stakeholder yeah. engagement, yeah. Um, there's no Northwest business organisation that has been engaged with, which I suspected, and that's why I asked the question. Um, so they haven't engaged with the London Day Chamber of Commerce yeah. or, or, or other organisations which are basically based at the border uh, and that. Yeah. So I think there is a missing gap there and I think we should go back to the department. Uh, yes. We can turn to them at Clark. And I think they, they have the point again around other regional chambers yes, and all of the rest. Absolutely. You know, so they, they only seem to have a noise hearing that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, so then move into the, sorry, I find the different papers here, um, 6.6. .6. Which is a draft of the letter that we agreed to send to the chair of the, um, or sorry, to the comptroller and auditor general. So, if members are, are content with that le letter, there's just there's a little typo there oh, yeah. um, that I wanted to flag up. It should say irregularities, not, not regularities. regularities. <laughs> um, to an extent, chair, the the CNIG has beaten us to the punch. He already issued a statement last week after the committee meeting that, well, he hadn't had a letter. He would deal with the issues, so he's expecting this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh no, it's it. Mm. Yeah, the hard copy's okay. Okay. Mm. So moving on then to um, item seven, the secondary le legislation, the SL one on the Education Student Support Amendment Regulations, Northern Ireland, twenty twenty. Um, this uh, is there's a clerk's memo at page 46 um, of your pack, and the SL1 then is at page 47. Mm -hmm. um, the statutory rule contains amendments to the principal student support regulations and the education student support number two regulations NI 2009. It makes provisions for the support for students. Um, be taking designated higher education courses in respect of an academic year beginning on the 20th of September. So, Chair, this is our 2020 version of the members will recall in our first couple of meetings we dealt with 17, 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. so this, is, this is the 2020 update. Um, so, there is a breakdown of the rates um, in relation to the, the tuition fees at page 48. Mm -hmm. The SR is subject to negative resolution um, procedure before the Assembly. It's anticipated that the rule will come into operation in April 2020. Um, this is the committee's opportunity to consider the policy set out in SL1, uh, as it's not possible to amend this once the rule has been laid in the Assembly business office. Um, so if members are content with the policy implications, I'd just like to make one wee point in relation to the post-graduation fee yes. loans. Um, so they reflect about how they are not intending to disadvantage um, yeah. students. They, they don't reflect the disparity um, in postgrad, the cost of postgrad co courses, maybe South and um, students from here being able to access them. So I think maybe as that's something we could just go back to the... We'll go back with that. Um, and the same for um, students who are going to England, Scotland or Wales. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so then... Moving on to um, item number eight, there's a written briefing from the Health and Safety Executive for um, Northern Ireland on page, the written brief at page 55, 
The draft corporate plan is at page 61, and there's a draft operating plan for 2019-20 at page 105. Unless members have any actions they wish to suggest, John. And it's just uh, it's alarming when you see it in black and white um, in terms of the number of deaths that are associated yeah. in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, one of their plans is to reduce serious and fatal accidents by 10 percent to no more than 50 per annum. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just shocking, and particularly mm -hmm. in the farming industry as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lays out the figures there on mm -hmm. page 50. That's it's, yeah. so. Um, it may be possible in the future for even to get a, a briefing, direct briefing with them. Yeah, We've had them before. Yeah, yeah. we we yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, there's a new um, there's yeah. a new yeah. chief executive yeah. that the committee well, wouldn't have had. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. You've been um, around a few corners. But <laughs> might be a useful opportunity to meet that new yeah. Yeah. that well, new director. Yeah. But even if it helps you know, highlight the, the issue around workplace yeah. safety and, and mm -hmm. farm safety, if yeah. the committee yeah. has a briefing. Yeah. With what what we also do, chair, um, and we, we look for members' help in this. Um, we receive the alerts they put out at, at various times in terms of you know when, when particular uh, seasons begin on farms and the particular issues mm -hmm. and, and safety concerns that are then we send them out to you and if you could mm -hmm. send yeah, them out as far as you possibly can get them out over social media and so on the more people mm -hmm. that know the better yeah. so we continue to do that but we we schedule them to come in um, okay. and talk um, to us because it, it is it is we're quite active on social yeah. media mm -hmm. and Twitter and yeah. so on in relation to the safety. Um, alerts, but no, I fully support having them in at some time. Okay. Claire? Um, I suppose I, I deal a lot in my constituency office with uh, workplace stress and how that leads to, in some circumstances, death. Um, I don't know if the health and safety executive would have a remit over that. I know a lot of this type of thing tends to focus more on the physical yeah. kind of illness and disability, but I think, you know, you know, for me, anyway, Northern Ireland post-conflict and, and the consequences of trauma and mental health, we never have an oversight around how the impact of stress, because that has a physical toll on the body as well. Um, I, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't read the report to understand if they if they do grasp that, but I know with my own dealings with them, I, I get a sense that they don't. And no, it, it's generally chair not within um, their remit, and they would probably um, point you towards the public health agency instead. Yeah. Um, I can totally, you know, their name, Health and Safety Executive, yeah. does tend to imply so much more. Yeah. Um, and it's maybe, because <coughs> members will obviously be aware, a lot of, of their most high profile work is, is in the farming sector. Yeah. And yeah. members will also be very acutely aware mm -hmm. of the headlines that have been recently in yeah. terms of um, suicide rates and so yes. on amongst farmers, general stress, yeah. etc. And it would be helpful and, and useful if they were not necessarily had that within their remit, but if that was part and parcel of the updates and warnings they put out yeah. to farmers yeah. of places they can go, people they can talk to. I think there's there's a lot of scope mm -hmm. for a more joined up approach there, and it's yeah. maybe something we could explore with I them think, when yeah, we get them in. Because it does say, you know, that there is. Um, the work, the HSE's work, is to prevent working conditions which are known to cause serious health conditions. Yeah. So, you know, mental yeah. health conditions yeah. are you know, health conditions. Even workplace policies, to me, that's a very, um, that's something which is very much within the control of the employer and the workplace, and how they, um, what those policies say, how they conduct those policies, how they implement them, has an impact on the employee, and to me, that's a direct workplace injury. You know, albeit it's a mental one, um, and the impact of that stress then on the body in itself causes a physical impact. I just I think sometimes we, we we just we go along with what we've always done, and you know, to me, one of the biggest crises in Northern Ireland is the mental health one, mm -hmm. and it has been for a number of years. And I do think how employers, both in the public and private sector, have to be conscious of that in in terms of how they develop their workplace policies. Um, so I, I, I would like to see more work on that. I, I think that's, that's absolutely yeah. a, a really useful conversation yeah. that we can have with with health and safety executive, mm -hmm. who, as Mr. Donna said, have always shown themselves to be very responsive yeah. uh, and, and yeah. kind of quick to act on well, situations like that. my dealings like with that. them, I've been referred elsewhere yeah. to the point that I'm back to where I started, nowhere. <laughs> um, and that's not good enough, given that it's so prevalent and the rises of mental health are rising. Yeah, chair, there's definitely synergies there mm -hmm. and, and working in, in uh, yeah. uh, you know, in partnership with a lot of other public sector organisations would be much better done. Yeah. 
Okay, Obviously, we, we, we'll, uh, we'll bring them in and we can talk to them about yeah. that. OK. Um, moving on then to item number nine, there's a written briefing from the Construction Industry Training Board. Um, that is on page 169, or there's correspondence on page 169 and the annual report on page 173, unless members have anything that they want to flag on that one in particular. Thank you. So moving on then to item number 10, which is our forward work programme. Um, it's at page 249 of your pack, and there's a number of events that, that Peter wants to highlight. Yeah, Chair, there's um, one of the things the members will recall we agreed to do was the concurrent uh, meeting with the Education Committee on the 14th to 19th strategy. We scheduled that in for the 18th of March. What we'll do is we, we, we go together uh, and meet in the Senate. Um, and then they will remain there and we will come back here to finish our committee meeting. But essentially, we will go through the process outlined in Standing Order 64B of <laughs> joint committees. And, and we've already agreed in our minutes and so on. So effectively, we're taking that in lieu of a resolution by both committees to meet jointly. So it'll, it'll operate like a normal committee meeting. Okay. Um, the Education Committee um, chair will chair. You will be effectively deputy chair. But well, our intention would be to operate the same kind of indicating for questions system we okay. always do. Who's going to be clerk? <laughs> the education, no, the education one. He will, he will do it because it's, it's his. It's effectively they are hosting. Oh, I couldn't possibly comment. That's a face as um, They will, they will effectively take care of all the logistics, um, and we will come in and then leave again. Okay. Um, the, the other couple I wanted to flag up was. Members will recall our rescheduled um, meeting up at McGee. Uh, it's the 25th of March, so it's it's the same format. Move to the 25th, so there'll be a, a breakfast with the Derry Chamber of Commerce, then the meeting itself, and then a, a stakeholder networking lunch that the university is organising. Depending on what is scheduled for the plenary the day before, we ideally would like to get up there and do a bit of a strategy session. We will plan for that. And thankfully, we weren't doing it today because budget yesterday would have really eaten into that. With any luck, we'll have a lighter plenary day. And, and that's, oh, if members just... might not, though. That could potentially be... Well, I've thought about this. I think it'll be the week after. Okay. If budgets... Finance Minister talked about the end of March, and I'm really hoping that literally does mean yeah. the week after we're at McGee, because mm -hmm. that would make our lives a lot easier. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that. But at the minute, um, Michael has emailed out to members um, highlighting the, the organisation around doing a strategy mm -hmm. session before, oh, night goodness. before. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, Larne Port uh, visit on the 22nd of April. Again, we are going to attempt to also have a meeting where flag this up to, to members last week, we're going to um, have our meeting at AEL, it's a social enterprise mm -hmm. um, close to Larne Harbour. We'll have our quick meeting there after we've done our tour. We'll tour for about an hour and a half and then we'll quickly go get briefing from AEL and then tour their site as well. Um, so if members just want to put that into their, their diaries for the 22nd of April, then um, week beginning, 13th of May, uh, we're bringing Put a motion to the Assembly. That, now, I should probably explain to members what we're doing with that. Um, members will recall we've talked about doing a number of discussion, sort of forum stakeholder events on a couple of issues. The 29th of April, we've got one scheduled in for energy. That has got to have an outcome. Um, so what we're going to do is effectively operate it like it's a very intense, short inquiry which means we'll do the event, we'll get feedback out of the event, we'll transcribe that feedback into a little report with recommendations from the committee, and we'll bring that to the Chamber's emotion. Mm. Members will, will appreciate there is, is no point in spending the time talking to the stakeholders and not taking it somewhere. So bringing it to the floor means the issues are profiled, and it also allows the Minister to take it on board and potentially respond, and, and it allows us to feed back into that energy um, strategy process as well. So it's just a new format we're trying. Members will be used to the lengthy inquiries that can take years. We're just trying to make that a bit faster and a bit more punchy and have instant impact. Okay, and just on the, the McGee visit, yes. um, NUSA, yes. USA, are yes. they so we Yes, they, they are, are very patiently um, hanging on for us, as are the 
UU Students' Union, so they'll okay. be coming to that networking great. lunch, and they'll make themselves available as well for members to talk to. Um, also, we talked to members again close to the time about we're organising a bus up, so if plenary lends itself, members can get the bus up to them again. We bring that back down, obviously, again, we wouldn't leave you stranded there. Um, but we we'll keep those details coming back to members just so that you, you know what we're what we're thinking okay. of and how things will work. So moving then to item number eleven, which is correspondence. Um, I eleven point one is it page two hundred and fifty four. Um, it's correspondence from the PAC. Um, so if members can open this, there's any actions to suggest. Mm -hmm. Um. Then 11.2, there is correspondence from the utility regulator giving an update on Sony governance review consultation on page 258. Um, unless members have anything to add to that, I think um, we may want to talk to the utility We can explore that as well, yeah. yeah, with the utility regulator. Yeah. Um, item 11.3, there's correspondence from ICTU at page 260 of your pack um, requesting to come and meet the committee around both civic engagement and the um, workers' rights, employment rights mm -hmm. um, stuff that has come out of NDNA. NDNA yeah. So I think we, we hope to get that into the work programme as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. Then there is an invitation from the Human Rights Commission at page 261 of your packs. Um, the Commission is partnering with the Legal Innovation Centre at Ulster University for an event um, at this year's Imagine Belfast Festival called The Computer Says No. Uh, about how welfare algorithms punish the poor. I'm sure it's something we've all a big interest in. Mm -hmm. um, so the committee is invited to the event and is held at Ulster University um, from 5.30 to 7 on the 25th of March. So there's a link there if members want to RSVP. 11.5 um, then, there is an invitation at page 263 um, of your packs from the Irish uh, League of Credit Unions. Um, a reception in the Long Gallery on Thursday the 26th of March from 12 till 2. Um, or, I think we, the event is to celebrate the achievements of the credit union movement and those members are, who are available are asked to respond by the 20th of March. 11.6 um, then there is the investing activity report at page 13, oh, sorry, page 19 of your table papers mm -hmm. um, which we, members will want to consider yeah. for themselves. Um, so then moving to 11.7, there's correspondence from NI Farm Groups at page um, 24 of your pack. Um, so if members are content that the, the chair or the deputy chair and myself will arrange to meet NI Farm Groups and that all members are informed of the date and the time so that if they want to come along that they can do so. Great. Okay. So then moving on to um, uh, item number 12, any other business? We have nothing, nothing unless anyone us. wants to. Great. So item 13 then, um, next week we will meet as usual at 10am here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29.